Hi everybody. So when first learning the hand pan, uh, the first thing to actually get your hands on, pun intended, is the actual sound, uh, the actual uh, touch technique itself. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people underestimate how easy it actually is to generate the sound, but in a matter of a few minutes to a week or so, uh, a couple of weeks maximum, you'll most likely be able to get a, a nice clean sound from hitting any of the notes on the hand pan. It's almost as easy as just hitting it, but there is a technique to it. So the way you might like to try to begin with is by using the flat part of your, your middle finger. So not the, uh, what I call the bony tip part, which is the actual tip here. It's much more bony there. Use the flat fleshy part of your middle finger and start by uh, trying to uh, create a sound on the ding note, which is your central note here. Now when you actually hit the, the note itself, it's less of a, a touch, but it's more of a tap, a quick tap. And the way you actually want to impact the drum and release is ever so fast that you have to imagine it's like uh, just quickly uh, tapping a hot plate. Because the problem is if you hold your finger onto the note for too long, for example, you mute the sound. So if you sound like you're generating this kind of muted sound, you know, it doesn't ring, it's, um, it's a very short, short and muted sound, uh, then that's because you're not releasing your finger quick enough. It's a quick tap. So you start by doing this. Because if you don't get the sound started in the first place, then, um, then the other notes won't be able to sound as well. And you won't be able to have fun playing each note. And try your other hand. Exactly the same technique. Now don't move on to the next stage until you've actually mastered this technique. We'll call this the touch technique. Just to reiterate, we're using the flat parts of your middle finger between the, the middle section and the, the very tip of the, the finger. And it looks like I'm using my palms to rest, which I am doing occasionally, but I'm, not defi I'm definitely not using the palms to create sound in any way. The sound is coming uh, directly and only from tapping the tip of the ding note, and it can be anywhere uh, within this, this bulge here. And just play a, con a constant rhythm similar to this tempo, maybe one beat per minute, until you find that you're actually being able to create the sound that you want. Once you've done that with the ding, you can move on to the other notes. So before we start playing around with the other notes, it's important to know the actual order that you play them in. And yes, there is an order. It's called the scale. Depending on your hand pan, you'll have a different scale. And depending on the number of notes you have as well, uh, you start with a different hand on the ding, i.e. here. But don't worry about that right now. Right now, we'll, we'll firstly learn how to play the second note. So that was the first note, the ding, right in the middle. And then the biggest note um, surrounding the ding needs to be facing you perpendicular. What does that mean? It basically means um, at a 90 degree angle, looking like a T, find the big note which surrounds the, the ding. So in my case, it's this big note here. This big note needs to face you like this, that angle. And this is your second note. So you've got your ding here, which is your first note. And you play that with your, if, if you're playing with a nine note hand pan, you start with your left hand. So you play that with your left middle finger. That's one. So if you were to say to yourself, or speak out loud when you hit the notes, you would say one. Or 
if you don't want to have you don't have to uh, sing in pitch you could just say one and this one would be two notice how for the second note I'm not actually using my middle finger and there's a reason for that it's because when you go up the scale it's actually more natural to use your thumb for the second note as opposed to do what I call this chicken wing here and actually try to play with your middle finger it's up to you but um you can get just as nice a sound from this flick action by using your thumb on the second second note here and the way you do that is position position your hand in such a way that it's resting above the note the second note here and you're not aiming to hit the uh, the central concave section of the note you're aiming to hit the outer ring sec section here you can see which I'm outlining so you rest your hand just above that between the uh, the two notes here the space here and you rotate to about a 90 degree and then you you just flick down it's not too aggressive it's just a, a light touch rather a light tap similar to the hitting the ding note it's a light tap it's a combination of a, a rotation flick and a drop <clears throat> what you're really aiming to do here is similar to the ding note just quickly hit and release to get that best sound you can now you don't have to practice this with your your other hand because with the other hand I normally use the middle finger so that's the same middle finger technique you've just been practicing on the ding note here so once you think you're ready after having practiced the ding on your middle fingers and note two with your thumb you can start playing them like this alternately you're getting that good sound from each note because as we learn more notes it's only going to sound a lot better if you've already been able to establish your, your sound one two so if you're looking closely you've probably noticed a pattern you've got the left hand starting and then the right hand starting or in numbers that's one and then two now after two comes three, which is this note on your left side here. And as you'd expect, you play that with your left hand. Because the pattern of hands as you go up the scale is left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's go back to the slow stages here. So you play one, then you play two. And then on the note on the left, you play three. So we'll do that again. One, two, three, and again. One, two, three, just keep doing that. One, two, three, click, click, one, two, three, Click, click, one, two, three, click. It's important to play in time because playing the handpan is all about playing in time. After you do this, one, two, three, you can try going to four. One, two, three. Try to go to five, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. 
Once you've sorted that out at that very slow tempo, tempo, you can start to actually increase the speed. And that's your scale going up the handpan. Now of course that's not it, you're just halfway to actually learning the first step of playing the handpan. Once you go up all the notes, you actually want to be able to come down. And that's not complicated at all. All you have to do is as you would go up, play left, right, left, right, left, right, left, you go immediately back down, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. So I do that slowly, going up, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. And then right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. So from the top that's left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. So up and down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So don't play nine twice. When you're up there, you only play it once. So like this. I didn't play nine twice, you see? It, you go straight up and then straight down. And that, there you go, you've got the scale. I'll do that slowly for anybody wanting to practice. That's essentially the first stage of learning the handpan, playing the scale. For our second stage in our next tutorial video, we'll be teaching you how to um, integrate different, um, different patterns in going up and down the scale so that you start to actually generate and create some kind of melody in your playing. For example, right now you can play, which already sounds very melodic, thanks to the handpan being um, so easy to play. But perhaps you want to vary that in your playing so that you can do something like this. Check out stage two video in the comments.